Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Temple Institute Parsha class. My name is Gedalia Meyer, podcasting from my home in Male Dumim, Israel. Though it sounds like a broken record, once again, I start this podcast with the unneeded reminder that both here in Israel and in many places in the world, we are still in the midst of this seemingly endless pandemic. We have no idea how and when it will end, or if the future bodes better or worse for us. It seems as though all we can do is hope for the best and do whatever we can, both physically and spiritually, to ensure that ourselves and those around us stay healthy and safe. We are unquestionably living in strange times. If one stays up to date on the news, it seems as though it is all doom and gloom. Many of us long for those times in the past when the worst that could happen was political scandals, a not quite steady economy, a slew of societal problems of one form or another, and the ever-present specter of the world coming to an end through global warming. Now those worries and whatever else kept us up at nights seem like distant memories of the good old days when life was simple and predictable. And we knew that somehow things would work out no matter how problematic they may have seemed at the time. Hardly a day goes by without reading or hearing about the looming disasters to our jobs, our normal activities in life, our entire economies or our lives. It's like we woke up to a nightmare that just won't end. There are two things that come to mind when contemplating this apocalyptic outlook. First is that it probably isn't going to be all that bad. This too shall pass just as every other potential world-ending world catastrophe of the past did. We just have to ride it out and keep on keeping on. These things, things will change, perhaps for the better or perhaps for the worse, but we shall be able to adjust to whatever comes our way. While this may sound naive and overly optimistic, it is probably the only way to get through something like this. The second thing is that we have to prime ourselves to be able to get rid of what, to get through whatever happens. It is not enough to just hope or even to pray. We have to strengthen ourselves to rise to the moment. How is this to be done? How are we supposed to prepare ourselves for an uncertain future? Believe it or not, there is something in this week's Parsha that may help answer this question. The Parsha is called Matot, which means tribes in biblical Hebrew. It happens that even in the Bible, it is a relatively rare word for tribe, but there it is right there in the first verse of the Parsha. It also happens that the word has very little significance to what comes next, so we are not going to pay much attention to it. There are a few different subjects in this Parsha. The first deals with the arcane topic of making or annulling personal vows. The second is the details of a brief war the Israelites fought with the ancient tribal nation of Midian, whom we encountered in the two previous Parshas. The third is a long and quite detailed rendering of a deal that Moshe brokered with, two, brokered with two of the tribes of Israel who wished to stay on the eastern side of the Jordan River and not settle the land of Israel itself. The deal forced them to commit themselves to fighting the battles to conquer the land with the rest of the Israelites, and only when all that ended could they return to their families on the eastern side of the Jordan. Admittedly, none of these subjects seems remotely connected to anything to do with pandemics or uncertainty or preparation for an uncertain future. However, the Torah is a tremendous storehouse of potential wisdom, and it is seemingly always possible to find some answer to whatever problem one is facing at the moment. In our case, we are going to focus on the first section, the one dealing with vows. It happens that making, fulfilling, and annulling of vows is a fairly important subject of the Talmud, the primary source of Jewish law. The primary source for all of those Talmudic laws concerning vows is this section right here. The basic details can be stated rather briefly. A vow is a formal oral declaration that a person makes to commit themselves to some future action or mode of behavior. Classic biblical value, vows may have included bringing some voluntary offering or making a pilgrimage to the temple in Jerusalem, but they may, have, they may have included much more mundane things like not eating a certain kind of food or not dealing with a specific person in a specific manner. 
These same kinds of commitments apply equally well to today with regards to diets or smoking or personal behavior or any other matter that a person feels they have to make a formal vow in order to solidify a commitment. The vow must be stated clearly, though it need not be heard by anyone else. There may be time limits on fulfilling the vow, and they, have, they become essential details of the vow that must be observed. This is serious business. There are ways, however, of, of annulling or releasing the vow. This is what the bulk of this section in the Torah deals with. Annulling or releasing of vows is a formal process that involves going to a person who has the authority to do such a thing. Examples in the Parsha include a father annulling the vows of his daughter or a husband annulling the vows of his wife. That these examples may or may not fit into the norms of modern society is not the important point here. The point is that annulment must be done by someone other than the person who made the vow. Contemporary Judaism employs either a rabbi or a delegation of three qualified people to serve in this role. When sufficient reason is given for annulling or releasing the vow, there is a formal process for annulment. When this is done, the person is no longer under any obligation to complete the vow. Modern people might wonder why they were ever under any such obligation. All that ever happened was that the person committed themselves to something or other and realized that they either couldn't or didn't want to stick with it. What is really the big deal with simply throwing in the towel and forgetting about the vow altogether? This, it turns out, is an important question and one that tunes us into the core of this entire subject in the eyes of the Bible and Judaism. A vow is not simply the way we view a New Year's resolution, though those may indeed be considered formal vows. Typically, we consider our vows or commitments to be nothing more than wish lists that can be taken up or let go, let go of as we choose. Nobody really takes these things very seriously anymore. This is not so in the Bible. The second verse in the Parsha states this clearly. Quote, when a person vows a vow to God or makes an oath to prohibit something on his or herself, that person shall not break their word, but shall do all that was expressed verbally. While this sounds very biblical and harsh to modern ears, it was probably the expected norm, the norm of Jewish society, Jewish societies until very fairly recently. It basically states that we have to stick to our commitments and cannot treat them lightly. They cannot be dismissed as one more bit of hot air that comes out of our mouths. Words and commitments to some degree reveal the fiber from which we are made. If our words and our commitments mean nothing more to us than some nonsense we post on Facebook, then that to some degree is what and who we really are. Nobody is suggesting here that we have entered into a lifelong contract every time we open our mouths. Most of the things we say or post are really nothing more than thoughts or suggestions or small talk that involves no lasting commitments. Neither the Bible nor Judaism suggests anything otherwise. However, when a genuine commitment is made, it has to be taken with utmost seriousness. This is why such commitments, commitments if not truly intended to be fulfilled, should not be made as formal vows. The bottom line in all this is that a commitment is a commitment. If we treat our commitments as nothing more than wishful thinking, then that is exactly what they will be. The price we pay for this, of course, is that we place little to no value on our own abil ability to stick things out. This, in turn, diminishes ourselves, both in our own eyes and in the eyes of others. This is precisely why the arcane matter, matter of vows is taken so seriously in the Bible and in Judaism. This also happens to be the reason why Moshe was so exact in the details of his deal with those two tribes that didn't want to settle on the western side of the Jordan River. He knew that if he didn't include the fine print, they would find some way out of their commitment. This is just the way things are and the way people are. The only way around this fact of life is to, make a is to make a personal commitment to keep personal commitments. In other words, to treat vows with the seriousness with which they should be treated. Perhaps, in some way, this is a remedy for the spiritual doubts about our own fate during uncertain times such as those that we are, in cur we are currently in. To make a commitment towards some, some improved mode of behavior to break a long-standing bad habit, 
to resolve to be a better person. These may not cure the virus itself, but they may cure some of its side effects. To stick with those commitments and to follow them through may very well be a remedy of sorts to the uncertainty that we all find ourselves mired in. If nothing in life is certain, and we find ourselves groping for anything to anchor ourselves to security, there, be no, there may be nothing available for us other than ourselves. We can be our own source, source of direction as to which way to go when we really don't know what will happen. We cannot control everything. Truth be told, in the big picture, there is very little that we, can, we really do control. But we can control, at least to some degree, how we see ourselves. Making commitments and sticking with them is as good a, as a barometer, good a barometer as any for knowing how firmly invested we are in ourselves. Shabbat Shalom.